Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will discuss axial flow compressor characteristics. We will start with the uh, dimensionless parameters which are used for comparing the performance of uh, axial flow compressors, then losses in axial flow compressors, choking flow, choke flow, stalling, surging and we will do some worked example. Uh, there are certain dimensionless parameters which are used in, in, in the axial flow compressor in order to judge the performance of uh, axial flow compressor. Number one is flow coefficient. The flow coefficient of a an axial flow compressor is uh, the mass flow rate and mass flow rate at the tip of the blade, mass flow rate at the tip of the blade and <coughs> this is F V F well, flow velocity, this is flow velocity 10 alpha 1 plus 10 beta 1, it is nothing but V F by U because the rest of the things for calculating the mass flow rate are going to remain same. Only there will be a change in velocity, velocity actual velocity mass flow rate and mass flow rate corresponding to the tip velocity. So, we will be getting this expression. So, flow coefficient is 1 by 10 alpha 1 plus 10 beta 1. It is a dimensionless quantity. <coughs> Another is head coefficient, head coefficient is denoted by lambda right and it is enthalpy rise in a stage divided by enthalpy corresponding to peripheral velocity. This is kinetic energy of kinetic energy at the tip of the rotor. Now, enthalpy rise is uh, u v w 2 minus v w 1 right and kinetic energy is half u square then u and this will be cancelled out and 2 v w 2 minus v w 1 divided by u. This is head coefficient and we can further write 2 V f V w 2 is V f uh, 10 uh, alpha alpha 2 minus V f 10 alpha 1 divided by V f 10 alpha 1 plus 10 beta 1. Now, this V f will be cancelled out, it will become a dimensionless term and after the head coefficient there is a pressure coefficient. In pressure coefficient the difference between these two is in pressure coefficient the delta H isentropic enthalpy rise is taken into the account okay. and we can always say that the pressure coefficient is isentropic efficiency multiplied by head coefficient. Like to, uh, uh, steam turbines, rea impulse reaction steam turbines, axial flow compressors also do have uh, degree of reaction, degree of reaction. It is denoted by R, in some of the books it is denoted by omega or capital lambda. So, the degree of reaction is again uh, the temperature rise in rotor divided by temperature rise in a stage or if you multiply it by, by C p sorry C p then energy imparted in rotor divided by energy imparted in a stage or work in a stage or we can write work in a stage minus V 2 square minus V 1 square by 2 divided by work in a stage. 
ओके नाउ v2 टू स्क्वायर माइनस वी वन स्क्वायर इज वर्क इन ए स्टेज माइनस नाउ इन ए वेलॉसिटी ट्राइंगल वेलॉसिटी डायग्राम दिस इज वी आर वन वी वन एंड दिस इज यू एंड दिस इज वी एफ एंड दिस इज वी डब्ल्यू राइट सो वी वन स्क्वायर इज नथिंग बट वी एफ स्क्वायर प्लस v w 1 v w 2 square and v 1 square is v f square minus v w 1 square divided by work in a stage now degree of reaction r is equal to um, now instead of doing it here we can write this is uh, sorry yes v w 2 square plus v f square minus v f square so this will be cancelled so r is 1 minus v w 2 square minus v w 1 square divided by work in a stage and the work in a stage is u v w 1 plus v w 2 sorry v w 2 minus v w 1 v w 2 minus v w 1 okay and this is multiplied by because this is 2 here this is divided by 2 and 2 will come here so r is 1 minus v w 2 plus v w 1 divided by 2 uh, divided by 2 multiplied by u or r is equal to 1 minus v w m divided by u v w m is mean will component so this is how we can find the degree of reaction of an axial flow compressor <coughs> now if we compare the centrifugal compressor with axial flow compressor centrifugal compressor and axial flow compressor centrifugal compressor and axial flow compressor now in centrifugal compressor the flow is radial in in the flow is axial as it implies from the name itself pressure ratio per stage is high 5 is to 1 or 6 is to 1 here the pressure ratio per stage may be 1.1.2 1 is to 1 but in axial compressor we can have number of stages it is very easy to add on stages in axial flow compressor so per stage pressure rise is low but we can have number of stages in axial flow compressor isentropic efficiency is centrifugal compressor is less than isentropic efficiency of axial flow compressor the reason i have already told you because in the centrifugal compressor this change in direction okay which imparts losses in the flow of during the flow of the fluid that is why isentropic efficiency of centrifugal compressor is less than isentropic efficiency of axial flow compressor we have not discussed here yes, this choking and uh, uh, surging so but we will discuss after this so choking and surging the gap is quite substantial in case of centrifugal compressor but choking and surging stage here the gap is not much the so choking and surging i will discuss after this this has large frontal area this is a small frontal area so because axial flow compressors have small frontal area that is why they are very useful for jet propulsion or in aircraft applications right <coughs> but while working with contaminated fluid when in centrifugal compressor if the fluid is contaminated we can use centrifugal compressor but that is not the case with axial flow compressor in axial flow compressor the working fluid should not have any contamination it should be clean <laughs> starting torque beginning torque to start the uh, 
compressor. The starting torque is in centrifugal compressor, starting torque in centrifugal compressor is less than the starting torque in axial flow compressor. <laughs> and this centrifugal compressor construction cost is less, it is less complicated. Here construction cost is or fabrication cost is more, fabrication cost is more and it is, it is a little more complicated if you compare with the centrifugal compressor. Now before this, before we start the numerical, we will short, in very short, in very short we will discuss the choke flow we have already discussed for centrifugal compressor. During flow inside the compressor, the, the velocity should not exceed m1, that is uh, v f is v f divided by gamma r t o. So, this should not should not shoot make or flow should not become choke flow. Otherwise, if it becomes supersonic in the later stage some shock may take place right and that will incur energy losses during the flow through it or through, through, a, a, through the compressor and it will hamper the efficiency and it will also physically damage the uh, compressor, right. So, it is ensured that choke flow does not take place inside the compressor. There is a term stalling. Now, stalling is due to the change in the direction of inlet. Suppose in a cascade, uh, there are number of blades, let us take three blades, right and there is a different angle of incident, angle is changing and rear angle. At particular angle, the fag end, at the fag end the flow separation may take place. This is known as a stall and this stall is not stationary. It moves in opposite direction of the flow with half of the speed, right and that is known as a rotating stall. Now, another phenomena is surging. In surging, let us uh, draw the mass flow rate and pressure ratio, right and this is a surging curve, this is a curve, <laughs> characteristic curve and in this position there is a pressure ratio, but there is no mass flow rate. It means the outlet valve is closed. Now, in this position mass flow rate is very high but pressure ratio is 0. It means the valve is fully open, full throttle, valve is fully open. It is an imaginary situation because if pressure ratio is not there, there will not be any flow. So, practically some pressure ratio has to be there, right. Now, there is a characteristic curve, load curve from here which cuts this at state, let us say this is A, this is B, this is C. Now, when the flow is taking place at C state C and we partially close the wall, when we partially close the wall, the mass flow rate will reduce. We further close the wall, the mass flow rate will reduce. When the wall is fully closed here, when we slightly open the wall, the pressure ratio will increase and mass flow rate will also increase. It is the reverse of this. Why it is happening? The moment we open the wall, the fluid will come with a certain velocity and this velocity will be converted into this technician pressure and that is how the pressure ratio is increasing, but up to a certain point only. Now, we are closing the wall, we cross this point D and come to this side, right. When we come to this side, we further close the wall, we further close the wall, in that case pressure ratio will decrease. Initially, when we are we were closing the wall, the pressure ratio was increasing. Now, we are closing the wall, the pressure ratio is decreasing. It means pressure in the pipe 
at the exit of the uh, of, of the compressor is more than at the exit of the so pressure in the pipe is more than the pressure at the exit of the compressor so reverse flow will take place so fluid will start flowing it is a uh, unstable type of flow right the flow will uh, if flow will start flowing backward towards the uh, the compressor but the moment it enters the compressor the pressure will be neutralized and again the so there will be a uh, interrupted flow or, or, or a, 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 a oscillating flow type of phenomena. So, this is known as uh, surging in, in the flow and it is witnessed in both in centrifugal compressor and axial flow compressor as well. Now, after this we will do one worked example. Now, this numerical states that in an axial flow compressor the overall stagnation pressure ratio achieved is 4. Right. So, pressure ratio is stagnation pressure ratio P O 2 by P O 1 is equal to 4 and isentropic efficiency is 86 percent. The inlet stagnation pressure and temperature are P O 1 is equal to 100 kilo Pascal and T O 1 is equal to 320 Kelvin. The mean blade speed is 190 meters per second. So, u is equal to 190 meters per second. The degree of reaction is 0 0.5. The mean radius with relative angles, relative air angle of 30, 30 degree and 10 degree at rotor inlet and outlet respectively work done factor is 0 0.88 calculate the stagnation polytropic efficiency. So, here we will start simply T O Z is equal to T O 1. Now, Z we are assuming there Z number of stages in axial flow compressor and in each stage a certain degree of pressure rise will take place and cumulative effect will be P O 2 by P O 1. So, T O Z is T O 1 P O Z by P O 1 raised to power gamma minus 1 over gamma and that is equal to <coughs> 320 stagnation pressure at uh, temperature at inlet is 320 pressure ratio is 4 and this is 0 0.286 and this T O Z is <coughs> T O Z is equal to 475.7 Kelvin. This is the temperature at the exit of the compressor not at the exit of the stage. T O Z dash will be calculated as T O 1 plus T O Z minus T O 1 divided by isentropic efficiency. Now, we have the value of T O Z, T O 1, uh, T O 1 isentropic efficiency T O 1 is already with, with us. So, T O Z will dash will be is going to be uh, 501 Kelvin. Okay. Now, we will take polytropic efficiency small stage efficiency. Polytropic efficiency is natural log P O Z by P O 1 raised to power 0 0.8 this is gamma minus 1 over gamma divided by natural log of P O Z dash by P O 1. This is polytropic efficiency we have already done earlier this one right and now we will be putting the values we have all the values with us. And from here the polytropic efficiency is going to be 0 0.884. Okay. <laughs> now, we will go for velocity diagram for the compressor. Now, velocity diagram for the compressor we can always take from the velocity diagram from compressor v u upon v f is equal to 10 alpha 1 plus 10 beta 1. If you draw the triangle, then this is V1, 
V R 1, this is U alpha 1, beta 1. Now, alpha 1 and beta 1 are known to us, calculate the with relative ang air angles of 30 degree and 10 degree. So, from alpha 1 and beta 1 are known to us. Okay. So, 10 alpha 1 plus 10 beta 1 that is equal to 0 0.7536. So, V f is equal to <laughs> u by 0 0.7536 is equal to uh, 190 by 0 0.7536 is, is equal to 252.12 meters per second. So, V f we can note down because we will be frequently reading this 252.12 one two meters per second. Now, V W two is equal to V F two ten alpha two. V F two is equal to ten alpha two. <laughs> now here, since uh, start करे start. Here, since uh, degree of reaction is zero point five. So, alpha 1 is equal to beta 2 and uh, alpha 2 is equal to beta 1, right. So, now V w 2 is equal to V f 10 alpha 2 and that is equal to 252.12 10 30 and that is equal to 145.56 meters per second. So, this is C w V w 2 is equal to 145.56 meters per second. Similarly, we can calculate V w 1 is equal to V f 10 alpha 1 and that is equal to 252.12 10 10 and that is going to be 44.45 meters per second. So, V w 1 is equal to 44.45 meters per second. So, work done per stage, work done per stage is, work done per stage is <coughs> u v w 2 minus v w 1 multiplied by <coughs> uh, some work done factor is also given. So, multiplied by lambda, u is with us, u is 190. V w 2 and V w 1 we have already calculated, lambda is 0 0.88 and this gives work done per stage as 16.9 kilo joules per kg, right. Work in compressor, this is work done in a stage and work done, total work done during compression is C p t o z dash minus T O 1. This is total compression during total compression and C p is already with us 1.005 T O z dash is here T O z dash we calculated T O T O z dash 501 Kelvin T O 1 is with us uh, this is 320 Kelvin and from here the work of compression is calculated as 181.9 kilo joules per kg. So, compression work is 181.9, stage work is this much, if you take the ratio we can find out the stages. So, number of stages z is equal to 181.9 divided by 16.9 is equal to 10.76 or approximately 11 stages. So, number of stages z is equal to 11, because we have to take the integer, we cannot take 10.76 stages. So, it, there are 11 stages during compression. So, it is a 11 stage axial flow compressor. Now, once the stages are calculated, then inlet velocity v1, v1 is equal to V 1 alpha 1 beta 1 V r 1 u. So, V 1 is V f by cos alpha 1. So, V 1 we are getting from here 
we are getting V1 is equal to 256 meters per second. And temperature at inlet, because we have only stagnation temperature, so temperature at inlet is going to be T1 is equal to T01 minus V1 square by 2 Cp. This is stagnation temperature, so inlet temperature is going to be this is 320 K minus 256 square by 2 into 1005. I have converted kilojoules into joules in specific, specific heat and then this gives the value of T1 is 302 Kelvin. Stagnation temperature is 320 and absolute temperature is 302 Kelvin. Now, after this, <laughs> P1 by PO1 is equal to P1 by PO1 raised to power gamma over gamma minus 1, right. Now, here <laughs> we have the value of stagnation pressure at inlet 100 kilo Pascal. T1 we have calculated T1 also is with us. This will give the value of P1 as 81.6 kilo Pascal, right. Now, we need to calculate the density, density at inlet rho 1, rho 1 is P1 V1 by RT1, sorry P over RT1 not V1. P over RT1, right. Now, P1 is these values are with us R is equal to 0 0.286 and this will give the rho 1 as 0 0.941 meter cube per kg, okay. Now, the mass flow rate is 20 kg per second and blade to hub ratio is 0 0.4, right. Blade to hub ratio means in axial flow compressor, this is hub, the blades are mounted on the hub, right and this ratio blade blade to hub ratio is 0.4, right. So, 0 0.941 density uh, multiplied by pi r t square, tip square 1 minus 0 0.4 square, this is area right this is density area and velocity velocity 252.12 this is the velocity of flow will give the mass flow rate and that is equal to 20 this is density of air at inlet we have calculated rho by rt1 this is because mass flow rate is taking place between the hub and the tip so this cross section area we have calculated here multiplied by the velocity and we are getting mass flow rate. From here we are getting the value of RT and the RT is 17.87 mm. And when we multiply this 17.87 mm by 0 0.4 we will get the diameter of the hub. So, tip diameter and RO is equal to 0 0.4 into 17.87 is equal to 7.15 mm. So, now we, are, we have the diameter of the blade tip, diameter of the hub and rest of all the values. So, that is all for today. In the next class, we will start with jet propulsion. Thank you.